What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having an incredible day. Today, it's time for part three. Oh, kitty cat's got to go. Bye. It's time for part three of our market farming series that we've been doing where we've been explaining the process we use, all the ins and outs of it when we used to sell our own vegetables here on our homestead, which we don't do anymore. Do not do anymore. For the sake of time. But we but, did it for about three years. And it worked very well, and we think it's a great model for people who are working or maybe people who are retired but mm -hmm. don't want to spend all day sitting at a farm stand. And so that's why we're telling you about it. Because it worked really well for us, and we think it could work really well for some of you guys who have a decent amount of extra produce coming from your backyard garden. Yeah. Now, on the first video, and I'll link both of those below. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can go in the description and see the first two there, or links to the first two. So the first video, we just talked about the general model, the bag model, as we call it, where we would individually package portions, enough for a side dish for a family of four. We would put five items per bag and then sell that bag for right. 25 bucks or so. Yeah. It, our price changed a little bit over the years but uh, it went from 25 then to 30 our last year of doing it right now in the second video we talked about more how did we know what to grow what we grew what crops did well for us what crops didn't do well mm -hmm. what crops were the most profitable and which ones we grew just because we kind of had to grow them because people liked them and right. it, it, it sold more bags if we had the item in there one thing i didn't mention in that second video that I forgot about was how we stored this stuff once we picked it because yeah. you know some of the things we would pick multiple times during the week like squash and cucumbers but a lot of the things I would just pick one day a week on the weekends like peppers they hold fine mm -hmm. on the plants so and we just pick peppers one day or collards or kale or cutting cabbage or pulling carrots beets things like that it was just one harvest day where I would gather all this stuff and how would we store it or how do we have enough room to store it until it was bag delivery or pickup day right we didn't have like a fancy cooler or anything to store these in like some market farmers do if you that could, would have been nice yeah it would have been nice and if you can <laughs> and if you've got the budget for something like that go for it our model was kind of very low <laughs> overhead uh so to speak now what we do have we have two full-size fridges in our house, one in the laundry room, one in the kitchen. And also in our barn right here, we have two full-size fridges. Right. Now, those are old fridges that we acquired. We didn't have to pay anything for them. People were getting rid of them maybe because the freezer wasn't as mm -hmm. cold as it should be. Or the or, fridge wasn't as cold as it needed to be. Right. And when you're storing veggies, you don't need the fridge really, really cold. Right. You just need it. We would turn them to their lowest setting. Yeah, you actually need to be careful. If your fridge is too cold, we've lost quite a few bags from them freezing. Yeah, sometimes the boys would go in there and mess with the temperature <laughs> setting. If they get too or cold, my mom. yeah, it would uh, <laughs> it would freeze them. So an old fridge that maybe doesn't work as good as somebody needs it to is a great thing. You know, somebody's just throwing it away. Grab that, and you can store yeah. your extra veggies in it. Um, this cat is all in this video. Yeah, I'm sorry. Not Chloe usually. is all about some market farming part three. <laughs> I mean, she's never this like about us. So today we want to talk about more of the marketing aspect of it. How we let people know when we had bags, how we acquired right. customers, um, all that good stuff. Some mistakes we made, some things we could have done better. Mm -hmm. So all the nooks and crannies of the marketing part. And what we think, if this is like your main source of income or something that you really want to do full time or want to expand even more than us things that we would suggest that you do right and, and okay. just to recap from the previous video we would average about 15 bags a week some weeks we would do 30 bags some weeks we would do 10 bags but it was probably an average of 15 bags and a week. that was all we wanted to do yeah it was it was 30 was bags was a hard that, that was, was hard. tough that, that was, was tough was... i mean it was you, you you know you made close to a thousand dollars a week when you did 30 bags right but it, it was rough it was hard on us so i would I'm saying the things that we did were because we wanted to keep it at that size. We wanted to keep 15 bags a week with a minimum of 10 bags a week. And so that's sort of why we, you'll see more, why we didn't expand a whole lot more. But if you're really trying to work and expand it, then we have some tips for that too. Yeah. And the first year was tough because we didn't really know what to expect as far right. as how much to grow or, or what the <laughs> what the demand for bags was going to be week to week, what items people were going to really want. As it got into the second, third year, we had a better idea. So what I would do is I would come out here on a Saturday or Sunday and 
I would harvest enough for what I thought we were going to sell with bags. I wouldn't harvest everything I could harvest out there because mm -mm. if it was something like carrots, I'm not going to dig all my carrots. No. Because we're not going to sell all of them that right. way. Right. So I would dig, I would pull or harvest the um, for the amount of bags I thought I was going to need for that week. And this was just a, a guesstimation. And sometimes I'd go back and harvest more. But, you know, we average 15 bags a week. So I would, I would go for enough for 15 yeah. bags. And based on all the different items I had in the garden that I could harvest, I would kind of make a list of all those items, what I had of each of those items, how many items I had of each crop, mm -hmm. so to say. And then from that, I could figure out how many bags I could do. Because there were some weeks when things were slowing down where it was tough to, to right. get together enough items for just 10. Exactly. So I guess a good way to explain this is say that you sold 10 bags, you have five items in each bag. You need 50 individual items right to be able to put in the bags so i may have listed eight different types of crops but that didn't mean that i had 10 things of carrots 10 things of lettuce 10 right. things of kale 10 right. things of so and so and travis said we mentioned this before but i just want to make that really clear so that we may have only had two things of okra i still listed them somebody got an okra another person got an okra eight people didn't get okra right but that filled in the gap that was made us be able to sell instead of nine bags you know 10 bags 11 right. bags or so forth and that's I, the beauty of this model. Right. And that, I remember many Sundays, <laughs> me asking Travis, it took a lot of communication between us. I'd say, hey, somebody else wants a bag. Do we have enough? And he'd go, oh, let me go out there and pull more. Yeah. Or, or she'd say, more. hey, I'm going to Valdosta, which she didn't frequently deliver or pick up, offer pickup but to. But maybe once every uh, other month. She'd say, hey, I'm going to Valdosta middle of this week. Can you do five or six more bags? And right. if I had the stuff, yeah, I, I'd go it. pull it and mm -hmm. I'd go harvest it again. But I, I would do the math, and I would tell her, okay, this week I can do, I can definitely do at least 15 bags. Yeah. You know, if you could sell more, right? sell more, but I harvested enough for 15 bags. So try to sell 15 bags. And that was another reason I couldn't promise people certain things. People would say, can I please have okra? Can I please have, and I'd have to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'll try my best to put that in there, but I just don't know. And that was more because I wasn't on the same side as Travis. If you're the person's doing the marketing st side of it and you're the person picking it you're gonna have a lot more knowledge than me but you know i'd be in the middle of work and they'd ask me for a specialty bag and it was just easier to say i don't know i'll try can't promise that and i suggest everybody stick with that because if you try to please everybody you're gonna go crazy yep so once i had everything harvested and knew how much i had of each thing i would tell brooklyn okay here's the items that could be in this week's bag it could be anywhere from eight to twelve different things mm -hmm. Uh, and here's how many bags I can do. She would create a Facebook post and it would basically say bag available this week. I've got this many bags. Um, when it was a lower amount of bags, it was like a first come first serve right. thing. So she would say, you got a comment sold or you got to text me or I got to the point where it was like, whoever sent us money on PayPal or Venmo first, they, got they, they got a bag. So I will, ha are you about to talk about the group, how we change? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll wait. So she would post it uh, on Facebook, on her personal page, and then we created a, we started off with a Facebook business page uh, for Lazy Dog Farm. Business page. Right. And the problem with that is, and this was four or five years ago, and it's it happens still today, not every follower of your page, just because you follow a page doesn't mean you see all their posts. Yeah. Think of all the people you follow, you never see anything. So we, we got to the point where people were like, hey, are y'all still selling vegetables? I haven't seen anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. And they were wanting to buy stuff, but they weren't seeing the post. So then we changed it up and we we're like, <coughs> well, at this point in the Facebook game, um, if you had a group, everybody that was a member of a group would see all the posts. Now that has changed now. Um, just because you're a member of a group, you don't see every single post in your news You have feed. to click alert me of notifications. Yeah, something like that. But the group was, was more effective than the business page was, so we went to a group right. and posted in the business page and the groups. Right. And that's just some Facebook algorithm stuff we had to kind of work our way around. We did boost the post sometimes in the Facebook business mm -hmm. page for like 10 bucks to, to make sure everybody saw it. Yeah. So that helped a little bit, It too. did help. So... You want me to start or you Go got ahead. some more things to say? Yeah. Okay. So we weren't just doing it on Facebook. <laughs> I had a lot of people who wanted me to text them. They were people who either weren't on Facebook or maybe they were older. Like we had some customers that are like maybe in their 70s, but they text, which I thought was hilarious. I mean, my grandparents text. 
so they wanted a text message. So I'm sure y'all know this. You cannot group text to a bunch of people who don't know each other. So I was sending out 10 and 15 texts every... So this is... We changed the dates we were doing it. We were doing bags on like a Tuesday and then a Thursday. And then we switched that up to a Monday and a Tuesday. So Monday was for one town that I went to. And Tuesday was for Moultrie, the town we live in. I suggest that you do your pickup or drop-offs or your deliveries earlier in the week like that. The... I didn't sell near as many bags when I was doing it on Thursday because people said, "We're it's the weekend. We're not cooking. We're going out, and we don't yeah. want these to sit over the weekend. I didn't ever realize this, but evidently people don't like to cook on the weekends. They like to go out to eat. <laughs> we cook all the time, weekend or not. So we were, you know, we're just yeah. a little bit different life pace, and we didn't quite um, realize that. But then once we heard that, sales started boosting, got a lot more customers when I had a Monday drop off and mm -hmm. a Tuesday so earlier in yeah. the week is better a Sunday worked super well when I did Sunday deliveries yeah, yeah. And, and we would try to post the alert to what we had and how many bags early on Sunday and that way people knew about it before right. they went to the grocery, the grocery store, store. Yes. and got their stuff yeah we, we learned that mm -hmm. um, kind of through the process and, and the people in your town may be completely different but here for us getting people on Sunday before they went to the grocery store and then you weren't going one there was one time where we did the bag post on Friday and it was like nothing. Yeah. Now I wouldn't yeah. do it on a Friday. I wouldn't even really do it on a Saturday. When I tried doing a Saturday, not a great thing. I would do it after <laughs> like either right before church or after church. People were on the oh, first Sunday. Yeah. Sunday. And we learned that because we would start getting texts that says, Hey, can you tell me what's gonna be in the bag this week? I'm about to go grocery shopping. So we learned that that way. Now when I did my post I learned the hard way. In the beginning, they were not very detailed. Mm -hmm. It would just say, this is what we have, da, da, da. And then after answering the same question 30 times, I realized, okay, these posts need to have a lot more information in them. So you just copy and paste the same thing? I would much? keep it in my notes on my phone, a really long, the long part about this is where pickups are. They're from this time to this time. Uh, the FAQs, pretty much. Right. Frequently asked questions. This how you pay me. This is when I need to be paid, so forth. It was probably this long, I mean, in my notes section. I'd copy that, paste that into Facebook, change the varieties of the vegetables that week, and I'd put a picture of maybe the most um, unique item in the bag. I suggest, though, if you can, I would spread out a sample bag and take a picture of that. Because yeah. when you have newer customers, I got a question a lot of, what? how much comes in a bag? What does that look like? I did do a video or two that showed about how much came in the bag and I pinned that to the top of our group. And that was more helpful. Helpful, I could just reference people to that and say, oh, see this video, it shows you about how much is in every bag. So that's a good thought too, because otherwise people are like, well, how much is in a bag? What does that mean? When they've never purchased from you before. Yeah, and so and you had an email list as well. Sorry, yes, I had an email list as well. Um, Sometimes I got some traction from that. Sometimes I didn't. And then I also, later in the game, I started using um, an app called Textful. And I could send people. I gave them a code word. They were in the text group based on like the code word. And then I would send one text out and it would send it to the entire group. Right. So, so technology is your friend. Yeah. And uh, the, the more you use it, the better you get at using it. It can really help streamline some of these processes. Right. And I would try to figure out a way where you are streamlining it. Because what it would turn into doing is I'd have to take a piece of paper like this and write down. Because I was getting Facebook posts. I was getting text messages. I was getting text remind apps. I was getting um, emails. Yeah. So it was a it, it was getting hard to keep up with on those mm -hmm. busy weeks. And so once you got somebody either comment and sold on Facebook or send you a text or replying to one of the emails or whatever, you knew who I was getting a bag for that week and then right. you would set up pickup or delivery. Most of the time pickup at your work. Right. Now see that was already listed and I had to um I know this sounds stern but the longer we got into it, I had to really write in bold letters. Please notice the pickup time and date. You must be able to pick up at this time. And the reason being, my work, well, I didn't have a full-size fridge. Mm -hmm. And that produce was going to go bad. So if you're in a similar situation where you're going to be picking up in a place that doesn't have a fridge, you've got to... I had about a three-hour window there that I felt safe with the vegetables staying out of the fridge. And if they didn't pick them up, they still had to pay for them. Yeah. I know that... 
but it happened so many times to us. And then what happened is I had to take that bag and dump it in the trash. I couldn't take it home. I didn't have, you know, so it was sort of like, oh, I reminded you. And that's another thing that sort of you have to keep reminding people, send another message. I'd have to do another post reminder, pick up your items this day, mm -hmm. you know, all in all. Okay. So let's talk about kind of the, the who is your customer part here. Okay. Uh, now, what we did worked really well because Brooklyn is pretty well plugged in uh, with her, her job allows her to be pretty plugged in. And she's also in several uh, women's organizations in the county or city, whatever you want to call it, works in several towns. So she knows a lot of people, and that really helped. Most people that were our customers already knew us somehow right. or another. But Talk, let's talk about the people who are your customer because this has a lot to do with, with how you're going to market your products and how you're going to put them out there. Okay. The, the one big thing to note when you're doing this is don't try to compare yourself to the grocery store. Mm -mm. Do not price your items based on what they cost at the grocery store. Do not base your... Do your quantities based on what you see at the grocery store. You're not trying to compete with a grocery store here. No. You have something different than the grocery store. Your food, you knew, you know what was in it. You know how it was grown. It's also stuff, if you you know go watch the second video, a lot of the stuff we put in the bags, you can't get at a grocery store. Right. Uh, at least around here at a grocery store, you can't. So you have a superior product to the grocery store, so don't compare yourself to the grocery store. Your customer is not somebody who is going to be really nickel and dime in your bag right. out when they get it. That's not really who you want as your customer. You, you don't. That's going to be a lot of trouble on you. Yeah. You want, you want the customer <laughs> yeah. who appreciates the quality right. of the items, appreciates how it was grown, the love you put into it, and also the uniqueness of some of the varieties. I want to say something real quick. Saying that... I would say you should put Facebook posts, videos, Instagram posts, whatever social media form you try to use, because you're going to have to have one, showing the way you grew it. Just little clips. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying long videos, just little things that get Out people interested. Stuff. Yeah, that show people, this is why it's fresh, this is what I use, this is what I did today, things like that. That's right. So you gotta you gotta market your product as unique and high unique and high quality because that's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. It's, it's not a, a mass-produced item. It's something that was given a lot of care and attention, and you should price it based on that effort that you have mm -hmm. put into it. Mm -hmm. um, so don't don't sell yourself short there. Don't don't think, right. well, somebody can go buy five ears of corn for $2 at the grocery store. Why should I sell somebody six ears of corn for $4? Because you, your corn is, is better. You know? Right. If you believe that, and, and if you grow it and put the love into it, you should believe yeah. that. So, I mean, if you're putting good quality products in there, then people are going to pay for good quality products. I'm not saying you need to have a bag that's $50, though. You right. know, it needs to be somewhat, what can somebody, middle way, you know, what, what can, middle range, what's a good price for this? Mm -hmm. You know, what would people be willing to pay for this? And that's sort of how we came to that number. We didn't, like, crunch a whole bunch of numbers. We didn't do a you know, it wasn't really mathematical right? where you probably would with other things. You know, well, this was what my cost of it was. This is pick a good number that you can live with and you think you can make money off of and go with that. Right. Because um, like we said on the last video, there are some items we made really good, you know, collars we made really good money off of. Broccoli and corn, mm, not very good profit margin on those right. vegetables. So it all balances out. But, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I, I hate to see people work hard to grow stuff and then sell it for for pennies on the dollar yeah. when it's it's high quality stuff. Right. Okay. Now let's talk about some of the mistakes we made. Um, Wait, before you talk about that, I want to talk about the thing about who is your customer. Okay. okay. Okay, sorry. I have something to add. So almost all of our customers were women. And yes. I found things, um, things that the I Women like. are usually the ones who go buy the groceries. Well, I mean, you're making a lot of assumptions there. But I think that's I think a lot of my Facebook friends were women, and that's who was like, yeah, I'll take this. Um, their husbands loved it, but the women were who was getting them. So, as women, we like things that are packaged nicely, that are branded well, and Travis is big into branding. So, I wanted to hit this real quick. If you're going to start this, invest in some nice quality bags. Don't use, you know, like old Walmart bags that you have. That yeah, does not yeah. sell well. We I mean, didn't, I mean, we have plenty of brown paper sacks from Publix. But don't when do I that. go there and buy groceries, right. I always ask for paper. But 
you don't want to give somebody bags that's public on it. So that's why we would buy the brown bags right. and put our own sticker we'll on it. We'll put our own sticker on it, okay? So another thing, I if you have the money for it, if you want to spend the money on it, um, something that would have been neat that I had purchased was I'd made them. They're just blank stickers where you could write an what the item was inside. You yeah. don't want to do that for every item. So when we put the individual items in these mm -hmm. bags, it would have been nice to label some of the items that people might not know what they were. Especially in the cool season when we have a lot of different greens. Sometimes we'd give people collard greens, maybe rutabag greens, right. and maybe mustard greens. Right. And they couldn't really tell the difference between them. Or the kale and the collards, they didn't know the difference yeah. between them. So it would have been nice uh, to label stuff. I think we labeled a few things. A few but things. But we were doing this at like 7 a.m. You know, our kids yeah, are yeah. up and I'm trying to get out to work. So at some point you're just like, blah, blah, blah. Just text me if you don't know what something is. Right. <laughs> you know? And that was another, you know, investment we would have had to make. We were trying to keep the overhead low. We would yeah. have had to, to buy those additional mm -hmm. labels and stuff. Okay. That's all I was going to say about the branding part. Yeah. No, I agree. If we, if we would have stickered each item, that would have worked a lot mm -hmm. better. Um, you mentioned you did the video uh, the one time. I, we didn't really have time to do it. It was all, we're just crazy life. We had a lot going on at that time. Our children are very small. Um, but if we would have did a video every week mm -hmm. talking about the items in the bag, I think oh, that would have yeah. sold more bags. Yeah. But if it, you wanted to sell more bags, right, if you want we had gotten to the point where we were selling as many as we right. wanted to sell. We were selling out every week. So, um, that was a mistake we could have improved on, have more video content. Right. Um, the recipe cards, a lot of people mentioned this in the comment that their oh. CSA does recipe cards and we talked about doing it, talked about doing it. We never really did it. Um, we would post some recipes on the Facebook page and that worked okay, but we should have had like a collection of recipe cards to go in the bags, at least one or two per bag. But that, yeah. in my mind, I was like, well, that's just going to slow down my bag packing time because I got to throw a card in there now. Yeah. I think a good way to do it would be go ahead and know what your most unique items are that people are going to know how to cook with. In the beginning, like right now when it's slow in July and September, if you're living somewhere like us and it's really slow, I would go ahead and print out 10 different recipes and have a stack of them and just pull them. The way I, I didn't have the forethought to do that whenever we had first started this and I was trying to do it on a week by week basis, that was too time consuming. Couldn't do it, wouldn't do that. So I would go ahead and maybe print them all out now and then just throw them in a bag. That would make it a lot easier. Yeah. Another mistake we made would was we needed a better drop off slash pickup system. Yes. If if we would have partnered with like hospital or maybe a local gym or something like that and have a more centralized drop off location, maybe somewhere that had a big cold storage and partner with them somehow or another, whether it was give them a couple bags right. to to allow us to drop off there or something. We talked about doing that, we never really did it. But I think that would have worked a lot better. I, I did email them. <coughs> I mean, we put some fillers out. It's, um, But some of our bags, we'd already sold so many to other people that it's like we didn't have enough production to sort of meet their needs as well. Yeah. And the, the last big improvement we could have made was would be to streamline the ordering. We talked about this a yeah. little bit. Streamline the ordering so it all kind of came through one funnel instead of all these different um, directions there. That would have helped keep up with things a little better and figuring out a way to remind people without having to individually facebook message them the people whose phone numbers i didn't have but who'd ordered on facebook or um the having to text a lot of different people to remind them because i went into court on tuesday morning and so i was having you know people would ask me questions and so and so so if you are going to do a pickup where you're not going to be at the pickup we did write people's names on the bag first and last name and um, we made sure they had already paid. If they did want to pay in cash because of where I was at, there were security guards I allowed them to give the cash to and then I'd pick it up from the officer yeah. after court. Crazy but. story one time, we had a bag <laughs> go missing. Twice this happened. And we, Brooklyn, had to look at the security footage <laughs> Trapped from, from, from the courthouse <laughs> annex and we found out who it was and it took quite some uh, quite a bit of Facebook investigation digging. Not that we was not that we were worried about twenty five dollars. Was a big deal. And, and I just wanted to know, did did you steal this or were you really needing it? If you really needing it, hey, I'll bring you another one. Not a problem at all. But I was just interested to know who thought it'd be a good idea to just take some vegetables at the courthouse where police officers all around and not blink. Yeah. 
and the the, the, so, the footage they got they got it and got on out of there i mean gone. Um, it happened to us twice y'all twice yeah. anyway that was just kind of a, <laughs> a funny part of it we became detectives um That's right. real quick but it did it made us really think golly we've got to find a different way to pick up and drop off because Every week, I was having to tell somebody, "Listen, we m I hope your bag isn't stolen. <laughs> like we've got, you got to get here early. Meet me in the parking lot." Um, I just want to real quick touch on delivery. That was something that I found to be, if you live in a smaller community like ours, you have a little bit of free time. I charged five dollars extra and delivered bags on Sunday afternoons. Yeah. Sometimes, not every Sunday afternoon, but especially during COVID. I did it, dropped it off at people's doorstep. And during the summer, we found some high school kids or college kids yep. that were home for the summer, and we pay them $5 a, a bag. Yeah, we basically paid them the delivery fee yeah. uh, that we were getting, and they'd come by here on Sunday, and then they'd go do the delivery course. I mean, make and that $40, worked, $50. That worked like a charm because yeah. they made good money. You know, we, we mm -hmm. weren't really interested in making money off the delivery part right. of it. And so that worked out really well. Yeah, that was about that. so nice to do. I, the only reason I really like delivery is when you know it's at their door, you don't have to worry about taking somebody to pick up. And it was just, I mean, people, the kids were napping anyway. And it was one way to hurt. I didn't have as many bags then on Monday or Tuesday to lug into a courthouse. Yeah. So that made it a little yeah, bit better you, for me. You harvest stuff on Saturday. It's right. gone out of your hands by right. Sunday. Right. You know, freed up the fridge, freed up a lot nice. of stuff. So nice. I really like that. That's a good tidbit I would get. You All got right. any other suggestions? Or that's it. That's it. I think okay. that's it. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of other questions, and if there are, put those in the comments below, and we'll try to uh, answer them for you. Hope you guys enjoyed this series. Like I said, I think this is a, a model that can be molded to fit whatever market you have mm -hmm. or how many vegetables you grow. But it, hopefully we gave you guys some good ideas if you're looking forward to expanding your garden and selling some of your extra produce. Um, I'll put on YouTube, I'll put a, a playlist called Market Farming Series or something like that and put all three of these videos on there so they can okay. be easily accessed from our home channel YouTube page. And um, hopefully this was helpful for some of you out there. I did see a couple comments. People said that they... Um, had started doing this type of model and it was successful. For yeah, them. so, so look in the read all the comments because some people had some really helpful suggestions that I thought were neat to read. I would have liked to have known we were doing it. Right, right. And like I said at the beginning, the 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 downside of a CSA, in my opinion, is you take everybody's money up front, and and what happens if you can't, you know, give them everything? Mm -hmm. You have crop failures. The downside of our model is you have got to sell a bag every week and every take week. Well, take and process money and orders yeah. every week. So there's benefits and drawbacks to every system. With the system we had really worked well for us. And if we weren't so busy, I, I would, you know, <laughs> I'd definitely do it again. <laughs> Don't worry. I think Abram's about to take over for us. Yeah, he, yeah. Um, he keeps talking about it, telling everybody about his bags or vegetables he's about to sell. So. That's right. So he, <laughs> he might jump back into the game. Put himself through college. All right with me. That's right. <laughs> if you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Old farewell mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life